So you don't ever want to push them. You're just trying to help them search on their own more effectively and more easily. So mine was more regarding oh, kind of like how to um, take the sales kind of view that people have, like that we're trying to force them to buy, but like they've been the ones reaching out to us, you know, like sometimes I feel like when I'm talking or kind of like following up with leads, they feel like I'm, hey, I'm trying to sell them a certain house or like I'm trying to sell them a house, but they were the ones that kind of inquired about buying or selling too sometimes. So kind of how do we get over that um, view of them at work? Kind of just a sales person, I guess. That's a really good question, actually. Yeah, I, I think, you know, what we would like to do is get them to buy a house or at least go see a house, right? And that's really important, especially, I mean, just kind of backing up here in this market with, you know, <clears throat> record low inventory with regards to, to buyers. Oftentimes we're running around frustrated as agents saying, okay, you know, I got to get one of these buyers to freaking buy a house, right? And you don't ever want to have that mindset. When will my buyers buy a house? Your energy can never be channeled or forcing buyers to finally pick one or buyers to finally go look at one. Because number one, we're forcing people to do something they don't want to do. We're supposed to be providing good customer service. You also find it's not very helpful. You know what I'm saying? So what I want you to do is channel your energy on getting more buyers. Does that make sense? So if you've got three buyers that you just can't get to pull the trigger and you're, you're staying in touch with them and, 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 and you're at least being you know there for their needs, what I want you to do is focus getting 10 of those buyers. Because if you have 10 of them, there's a very increased likelihood that you'll be putting an offer under contract every single week. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's the way you have to look at low inventory markets you have to increase the number of people in your buyer pipeline. And that's where your focus needs to be because it's harder and harder to find property and they're going to miss out on a lot more property too. So to make the same amount of money with less inventory to show, you've got to increase the number of buyers you have. So let's put your energy into getting more buyers so that you always have something going under contract and we never have to push any one of them too hard. Okay. Now, when we do follow up though, because I don't think that's Daniel's issue, Daniel's issue is when I am following up with these buyers, how do I not come off as, as being that way, right? And I think the best thing you can do there is re respect where they are in the process. Like in all likelihood nowadays, you know, everybody starts their home search online, right? And typically they're gonna go online and register someplace, whether that be Zillow, Realtor.com or somebody's website or something to look and search for property and they're going to start there and they're going to stay there for a while until they move through that timeline until they start actually getting serious enough to talk to an agent on the phone and they may be in that stage for a while just asking questions about different properties until they get real serious and want to start going in those properties right so you have to kind of know and acknowledge where they are in the process so if you're talking to them in, in stage one or two, which is A, I'm just looking online, or B, I'm just asking questions, but I'm not serious enough to start going in them yet, that's when you're just calling them as a customer service to help them with their search, right? And this is the old adage I always talk about when you walk into you know uh, Macy's and that greeter comes up to you and says, can I help you? And you say, no, I'm just looking you're not telling the truth. You aren't just looking, you're, you're there to buy something. And guess what? They're typically intending on buying a home, just not yet. And that's same with you. When you walk into Macy's, you're at the front of the store. You're not ready to buy a leather belt yet, but you're about to be, if they stay with you, you're going to walk through that store until you get to the men's section. And then you're going to go look at the belts and you're going to ask, then you're going to need to find one in your size and you might need some help and Macy stays with you. They got someone over in that section that's gonna help you. And then they got someone who's gonna check you out and let you pay for it. In this case, it's gotta be you all the way through. So we have to keep staying in touch. And what we're trying to help them with is their home search online, Daniel. So it's gotta be like, hey, are you getting enough emails? Are you seeing enough? Are they going to your spam filter? Do you want me to widen your search? Do you want me to increase the, do you want me to get you on my search? Do we wanna take you off Zillow? so you can get more listings that are more accurate so that I can give you a direct feed to the multiple listing service so you have full realtor access to all the listings 
the day they go on the market. And then are we st- and then we touching them in the future, whether it's weekly or bi-weekly, and just making sure, hey, do you see anything you like? I saw one that you, that I thought you might be interested in. Just want to point it out to you in case in case it just got buried in all your emails, that kind of stuff. So you're basically calling with customer service about their online home search. That's what you're doing. You're trying to find ways to help them. And maybe occasionally give them some information like, hey, rates just dropped down to 3.1%. They didn't, so don't freak out. But if they did, I might call them. I saw Sarah, she's like, what? The, <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, but if they did drop down to a low percentage, that might be worth telling them. You know, just say, hey, I mean, from where we were, you know, two days ago, you might be saving an extra 40 bucks a month for the next 30 years based on that rate drop. So I just want to let you know, but no rush. So you don't ever want to push them. You're just trying to help them search on their own more effectively and more easily. Daniel, does that help? Or is that, you gotta, you gotta give yeah. any gratification. I need to- Yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Anybody else have anything out there along those lines? I was pretty good though. You covered some good ones right now. I think I was on the, probably the key issues. What's funny, the reason I say that is because I usually get a little list in my head of stuff I want to talk about in case you guys don't come up with anything or you're quiet and you guys hit everything on my list, which is pretty pretty impressive. Yeah. Like it literally everything that I think are probably the most pertinent issues in what is a very uh, historically significant real estate market. This will be one we talk about guys. Um, You know, for especially you guys that are newer, you know, you, you hear a lot of guys like uh, Wayne and myself and, and talking about, you know, what it was like in 2008, or what it was like in with Wayne and I, we go all the way back to what it was like, like in 91 or something, but it's, uh, um, <laughs> but uh, you'll hear us go back to those weird markets. This is one of those weird markets for sure. You know, this is a really weird market is, it, it, you know, coming out of coming out of COVID going into ridiculously low inventory. And I don't think I've ever seen a general population that was more out of touch with the condition of the market than they are right now. So now more than ever, we as real estate agents must educate them. We do not take for granted that they know how hot this market is. They have no clue. We have got to educate them up front, especially our buyers, that man, you cannot ask for anything right now. It's never been hotter because I can honestly tell you it's never been hotter. There's never been lower inventory. So there's never been lower supply, which means there's never been higher buyer demand. So it's never been more competitive to buy a house. You cannot have any blemishes on your offers. They have to be clean, 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 and strong. Make sense? So keep the contingencies out, keep the closing costs out, or it's gonna be a long summer. I know. You know, it's gonna be a long summer. So we gotta find a way to keep it clean because they're not gonna get, they're not gonna get accepted. And if we're having a hard time getting through that, have a buyer consult, preventatively strike those types of issues. Hit those up out front, okay? Or hit those, get those out up front. There you go, that's good. All right, well, thank you guys. This is awesome. I, uh, I'm really excited to, uh, to uh, Emily, thank you. This is always, this is Emily's production, man. She puts this stuff together. I didn't have to do anything. I love that. Um, so th- she and the team and Lacey and, and uh, Des and all those guys kind of threw this together. So this is- Thank this you, is, Brian, for, for doing this. We know you're a busy guy, so we appreciate it. Hey, I, 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 this is my favorite, uh, favorite uh, 45 minutes of my work week. Um, so we're gonna do this every single Tuesday, except for next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I had a, uh, another commitment. But then after that, we're gonna go forward. So we're just gonna keep doing it um, nonstop every single Tuesday at one o'clock going forward. Um, so hopefully, you know, this, you guys keep showing up in big numbers like this. It'll be pretty awesome. So, um, it's good to see some of your faces again, man. This is, uh, this is cool. We've missed you, Brian. I have missed you guys too, man. I've, I've missed society, you know, it's, <laughs> that's for sure. I'm sure you all have. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, thanks again. We'll see you uh, here in a couple weeks back here, then going forward. All right. Bye guys. We'll see you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys.